Good evening, YouTube Model Railroader fans. Welcome to the Beauville in New Towns, vlog number 25 for 2020, and it just so happens to be the 15th of June, Monday to be exact. Ah. <laughs> Actually, I don't really need those on at the moment, but um, been an interesting few days. Um, I was really hoping at this point that I would have the, and it may still end up happening before this vlog is done, but who knows. Um, but I was really hoping to have the turntable fixed and remounted into the into the layout, and well, um, that didn't happen because the other night after I got finished gluing the track down, um, I went in there last night to take a look at it to go ahead and actually put it back into the layout and the bridge was stuck um it wouldn't it would it was turn it would turn to a turn maybe three quarters of the way and it would stop and the, the, the motor would just start spinning so i went ahead and put it in the other direction and it would spin for about three quarters of the direction then it would stop spinning again so um in the process i ended up uh picking it or trying to manipulate the bridge and when i did well I ended up with the bridge in my hand and the base in the other hand and uh, at least one rail that came, one of the two rails that came loose. So I got everything back together and I'm actually, I was kind of frustrated with it last night so I just kind of went ahead and just let it sit and right now I'm in the process of gluing that rail back down again and we'll see where it ends up because I did get the bridge fixed. The bridge goes a full 360 now so instead of only doing a 270 it goes the full distance so that's a good thing um i wanted to kind of bring you up to speed as to where we're at um it's kind of funny because i mentioned in the last vlog that i had started going through just yeah, just for something to listen to in the background but i wouldn't recommend that, that, that it's up to you but it, it's one of those things i i actually went through and i've been listening to some of my older my older vlogs now somebody would probably say well why aren't you listening to some of the newer channels well i found that some of the newer channels or some of the other channels out there um their newest video is the first thing that pops up well that's all well and good um if you want to try and do things to where you had you know day one through day 15 or whatever it is and have it just sit there and be able to you click on it and be able to roll you can't do that on a lot of the channels that are out there unfortunately and i can't keep going back and forth between my work computer and the main computer or not the main computer but the laptop that i've got sitting over there for background noise because i refuse to watch tv at this point um you know i i you you have no way of being able to just to let it run uh, i know one channel i tried to do that with and everything was going in reverse it's like, well, I've already, I, I know where you're at, be, oh, oh well. <laughs> like I said, to each his own, it's no big deal, but when I'm down here trying to, because I was trying, I'm, I'm going to try and catch up on some folks' channels, but, you know, like I said, if I can't let it just click, if I can't just click on it and let it float through and have it go in some sort of forward order and not reverse order, then it kind of, it kind of defeats the purpose sorry um but at any rate um i was doing that and I, I actually found out that i had some videos from a while back that people had commented on that i never got notification for which brings me to something else um i'm not sure how many people actually got a chance to see vlog well actually that says that vlog 24 has got 43 views and it was put up three days ago the question is, is the fact that I'm not getting notifications when people are leaving uh, leaving comments on the videos. Um, I know that this one here, for whatever reason, hasn't had that many comments, which is fine, but it's like a few people left, left notifications or left uh, comments, and the only way, way that I knew that they were in there was as if I actually went into, the, into that video and I could see that the people left stuff. I'm like, well, this is odd. So, I don't know what happened with Vlog24. I, I don't know if, I, if there was something that got screwed up or what, but in actuality, come to think of it, yeah, something is screwed up with it because 
Um, I've had this with the last, I think, two or three vlogs um, where um, I cannot, actually it's been the last, it's only been the last two. Um, I take that back, the June 7th and the June 11th one. Um, those two, for some reason, um, Filmora is not linking up with YouTube. I don't know why. It, it comes up, it says it's doing everything, and then all of a sudden I get a message saying that your computer is not connected to the internet. Really? That's odd because I'm sitting here, I'm looking at stuff on the internet. How is it not connected? So, I don't know what the deal is there. I, I, I went to try and get a hold of uh, Wondershare for more support and well now everything is automated and they don't actually have apparently I have an email uh, this isn't the first time I've had issues with it and it really irks the crap out of me because I went ahead and actually signed up for the lifetime uh, a while back of course the last time it was like oh you need to upgrade well yeah I upgraded that fixed the problem for about a month and a half now the problem now I've got a different issue the last time it wouldn't allow me to sign in at all now I'm saying I'm signed in, but then it gets finished processing the video and gets ready to do the upload and says, you don't have an internet connection. Really? Could have fooled me. i got a connect light over here. I can go out and I can do other things. I'm not sure what the heck's going on. Probably something with Google and YouTube again, screwing something up. But at any rate, that's another story for another time. Uh, so if, let me know if anybody else has seen issues with notifications because like I said, I'm not I'm not getting them I, I don't know. I'm not getting them for anybody else's channels, and I'm not getting them for comments left on mine So I have no idea anywho um, Something else that I've been futzing with um, and it's again people can sit there and go well you're you're really trying to um, you're really not doing this in the correct order well yeah I may not be doing this in the correct order um, but I, it's something that I wanted to do it's something that I've been wanting to play with it's something I've been wanting to mess with and I'm finally at the point where I can do it and that is the schedules you know how do how is this thing going to play out here again, I'm trying to make sure that the track work is good, even though it, it's not glued down yet. I want to make sure that I don't have issues. We talked about this in Vlog 24 as well. I had two, I had a set of cars that I hadn't run because the previous layouts they wouldn't run. They, they, the radius or the clearances were too tight. Um, thankfully, they work on this one. Well, it's because it's 22 inch radius and not 18. Um, but anyway, so I've been messing around with the schedule, and I mentioned this in 24, that I went ahead and I came up with a mock schedule. Well, that was all well and good until I came down here the other night. Actually, it was last night. And I started looking through, you know, the passenger trains. And realized that I didn't have, I didn't get back to the beginning. Oops. Um... So I was like, well, all right, so I've got to go ahead and make some modifications. I'd also forgotten about two passenger trains. The Beauville and Newtown one with the River Rossi cars and the new one that I just picked up with the Santa Fe cars that will eventually be redone for the Beauville and Newtown. So I was like, well, i got to get those back on the layout so I can verify that they're good, which I think I did that once before, but it's not, you know... It's, that's one of those things. Um, I also found some other little idiosyncrasies. One thing that I've found right now is the fact that I've got way too many pieces of rolling stock in one hidden yard, not enough, really enough in the other hidden yard, and the Beauville classification yard is basically almost empty. And it's like, well, that's not good. There's two locomotives down there, two cabooses, and about six or seven pieces of rolling stock. That's not, that's not, that's not going to work. So I've got to go back and I've got to take a look and see if I can't figure out, you know, when rolling stock gets sent down there and when the local trains and so i got to figure all that out. And again, that's a part of this whole thing because I have to figure out exactly where everything is going to sit when we start a session 
and figure out what it's going to take to get it from point A to point B to point C or point A to point B depending on whether it's a through freight or a local freight which is another issue. Um, in the process of running some of the, the through freights um, I realized that I really don't have enough of what I would consider road engines. Um, I've got an awful lot of switchers, I don't have a whole lot of road diesels. Well, it just so happened that the other night I was in watching one of my videos, uh, one of the DVDs from Dream Plan Build, and one of the things that Jim Hedegger brought up was, you know, there were different style locomotives, depending on the era, there were different style locomotives that were assigned different duties. Okay, fine. So when I started looking at my fleet, um, I figured it out that, you know what, yeah, you've got what you would consider uh, through freights. Those locomotives that do not have a switching cab. In other words, like the, um, the C-liners, the uh, F-units, um, you know, things of that nature, the PAs. Those aren't considered switch engines to me. Those are, those are through freight. At least for my railroad, they're going to be through freight. However, you've also got diesels like the SD40s, uh, the Jeeps, uh, and things of that nature that are, I guess for lack of a better term, dual purpose. It seems like a lot of railroads use them for both, local switching and for distance. You know, they might double and triple head them if they were going for a really long run, but for the most part, you know, those, those were, and then Jeep is exactly that. GP is general purpose. All right, I think I knew him. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, you know, I, like I said, I was, I was building some of these, uh, some of these through freights. I had to actually snag some of the, some of the switch engines to be able to do that. That's, the, which is something else as well. Obviously, an SD40-2 is not going to be sitting down at the Beauville classification yard. That, like I said, to me, that's a road diesel. That there's a that there's a special. That's a, a long distance loco style locomotive. Now a GP, yeah, the GPs could be down there. The S units would be down there. Those I can get. Those I understand. Those should be down there. The BL2s should be down there. Local switching, branch line switching, BL2. Obviously, that belongs down there. So, you know, I, I've, I've got a list of locomotives and what I think or where I think they should end up. So, I've got that something else that I'm going to have to play around with. And really, in reality, right now, that's where I'm at. I'm in that messing around with this thing stage. And as I've mentioned, I think, in the last two or three vlogs, even by myself, this thing is a freaking riot. This thing is a blast. It, I mean, you wouldn't think that a two-track main would have the amount of of what I'm doing down here. I mean, I'm putting an awful lot of traffic down here. I mean, it, well, unfortunately, we had a power outage earlier today, and I my computer rebooted, and I don't have my most recent Excel spreadsheet up, but I can hopefully this will. Hey, there we go. The way I've got it set up right now, after last night's messing around, there are 12, 12 passenger runs and 11 freight runs. That means that there's a total of 23 different runs that will happen on this railroad. Hopefully, hopefully in a 24-hour period. Um, you know, a lot of it's going to be through freight. I mean, the locals don't do a whole lot. I mean, they're in, they're out, they're done. I mean, they happen, and I may end up moving them down the schedule a little bit here to go ahead and have that break it up a little bit to where you've got a bunch of local or a bunch of throughs, a couple of locals, and then the rest of the rest are going to be through. So they might, I might slide them down the list a little bit, but we'll see. Like I said, I'm still messing around with this. Um, so. So that this video doesn't go too long, I'm going to stop here for a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and continue to play with this. I'm going to mess around with the layout a little bit while the, the turntable is in the process of being repaired yet again. Um, so, you know, that's, that's where we're at, and we'll be back in a little while, folks. I'm not going to be able to keep this one under 15 minutes. <laughs> we'll be back. <coughs> Sorry. 
I know some people had asked and they wanted to see this thing so um, <clears throat> I just got finished putting at least putting the turntable back into or onto the layout um, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to break this into two parts one will be the repair side and the next part will be the reinstallation so I'm going to go ahead and get this uploaded but be on the lookout for part two which will be the actual wiring of this menagerie so and that'll be at the time at that point we'll also be uh, testing it out making sure that it's it's functioning it sounds a little goofy but you actually have to have it someplace where you can run a train across it so um, because it's kind of hard to do on the bench so this will be the end for the actual repair of the turntable like I said the next part will be the actual installation and testing so we'll uh, be on the lookout for that well hello model railroaders again um, I'm <laughs> I just got finished putting the uh, turntable into the layout. I haven't wired it up yet, haven't tested it yet. Um, not sure how it's going to work out, but we'll see. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update because of the fact that really in reality, the after I got finished doing what I was doing the other night, I realized that this video is going to be already over 15 minutes. Uh, so, with that being said, I just want to go ahead and give a quick update as to where we are. Um, I actually went through, and I'm actually going to move here, I'm on the single tripod, or the single pod. I don't know what to call this thing. It's the camera holder. There we go. Um, but I did want to show a couple of things. Um, I went ahead and I've come up with a new schedule that I'm going to be running. Um, I did that the other night. And I've actually got 12, 12 passenger car movements and 11 uh, freight car movements. Um, uh, two of the last two of that are actually kind of funny. One of them is called one of them is called the 50s, and the other one's called the Shuffle. If you can gather, if, if you can gather as to what the, those two trains might be, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Um, but uh, let's see what else. What, I think that was really the only two funny ones that I had. Um, like I said, I called the one the 50s, the other one the shuffle. Um, oh, they have, that's right. The other one, the other one's called the mixed bag. <laughs> uh, AKA the rail fan's dream. Um, <laughs> the one with a little bit of everything in it. <clears throat> um, so I've got that set up, or I've actually got the schedule sitting here. Um, I went through and reset the railroad to a point where I can actually start from scratch. Uh, I shouldn't say start from scratch, but start from where I was at one point. Um, where the passenger trains are where they're supposed to be and the correct yards. Uh, I did add two of them. Uh, I added the, that one Santa Fe set that I just picked up. Um, that unfortunately for the time being will be pulled by a Chessie system locomotive, uh, one of the F units, uh, until I get the uh, undecorated F7 painted up for the Beauville and Newtown. Um, and speaking of the Beauville and Newtown, um, we have a update to, and this probably isn't showing up that well back here because there's no light, <clears throat> so I'll go out here where there is some light. Hey, uh, hey, there we go. Um, some new lettering on the Beauville Newtown uh, PA1 and a new number. It is now number 142. Why is it 142? Well, I kind of mentioned this a while back. <clears throat> that for... <laughs> swing, your, swing your camera around and around until you get out of the light. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had mentioned this a while back uh, about, you know, actually it was probably in a vlog two years ago. Um, <clears throat> one thing you have to remember with this railroad is that it's a bridge route. Um, and we've acquired, um, or this railroad has acquired a lot of equipment that a lot of other railroads were either selling off or it's just on, it's just on a run through. You know, some of this, it, it's... 
you know, we, we, it, it could be that the, the BNN is just leasing it and we're keeping the old road on it. Um, or it could be just passing through. Um, or, like I said, we could have acquired some older equipment, you know, from, from other railroads as they were getting rid of stuff. And we just haven't gone ahead and repainted it and made it our own. Um, <clears throat> because of the fact that we needed it on the road. Um, and of course now these days what would happen is is it would get patched out and renumbered for the home road okay fine we're talking about the 50s and 50s into the 70s here that I don't think patching out was done back then but that's beside the point for the actual locomotives that the railroad owns obviously the PA1 the F7 the GP30 um, <clears throat> what's going to happen is is their road numbers are going to be, guess from lack of a better term, is going to be the locomotive type and then a number. Well, because of the fact that the PA1 was the first locomotive ever painted up for the home road, and it happens to be a PA1, so it's number 100. 42 is a number that happens to be near and dear to me because that was the ship that I served on for four years. Um, so, you know, hey, that made sense. So instead of it being number 45, it got renumbered to number 142. It's a PA1, 1, and then the 42, like I said, after the ship that I was on. Um, what am I going to do with the GP30 and the F7? I don't know what I'm going to do with those yet. Um, I might make them other numbers. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> you know, to me... It, it's an arbitrary, the, the biggest thing is, is like with the GP30, the first two digits will be 3-0. For the F7, its first digit will be 7. If it was a 9, it would be a 9. If it was an E9 or an E, you know, something like that. So, um, that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, I need to get, I'm going to go ahead and probably, I'm way early on this, but I'm going to go ahead and get this uploaded. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the, uh, the, Roundhouse or the turntable repair uploaded and I may mention that that one there is going to be a two-part series that'll be under how did he do that so you all know the deal wait for the highball green tracks ahead be safe god bless we'll catch you all next time see ya